handling of a legal dispute involving a litigant, Justice Chiawahua, and a Chinese construction firm, China Henan International Corporation Group Company Limited, over billions of shillings in claims, has exposed what appears to be a cleavage in the upper edge loans of the judiciary. The difference of opinion pits the Chief Justice, Justice Alphonse Owini Dolo, and Principal Judge Flavian Zeja on one side against the head of the commercial court at the High Court, Justice Stephen Mubiru. Justice Mubiru claims the occurrence bubbling below the radar, seeking to usurp his powers and influence the reallocation of a case which goes against the grain of established procedures. Justice Mubiru accuses the Chinese firm of forum shopping, a colloquial term, for the practice of litigants seeking to appear before a judge who could grant a favorable judgment. The law firm representing the Chinese construction firm had demanded that Justice Mubiru recuses himself from the execution proceedings as a result of bias and accusation he rejected. Chabahua is represented by Crane Associated Advocates, while China Henan International Corporation Group Company Limited is represented by Logic Advocates. This dispute arose after 16th September 2018 when Chico contracted Chabahua to provide consultancy services at a fee of US$2,200,000 for the construction of the Rukunjiri Kihihi Shasha. Kanungu Road in Uganda, measuring 78.5 kilometers. This project was co-funded by the African Development Bank and the government of Uganda. The parties agreed that this money would be paid Shabahwa from the initial installment paid to the company by UNRWA. In December 2018, the Chinese firm received an advance payment from UNRWA but did not notify Chabahua nor pay his contract sum as they had agreed. Upon learning of the payment, the consultant contacted the Chinese firm and the parties executed a deed of variation on 14th January 2019, reducing the contract sum from two million two hundred thousand U.S. dollars to one million three hundred thousand U.S. dollars. The reduction was based on the presumption that the ADB had cancelled the loan for financing the road project, compelling the company to renegotiate with UNRWA. The contractor later discovered that the reports that the ADB had pulled the plug on financing the construction were untrue. Chabawa sued the Chinese firm for breach of the consultancy agreement and sought a declaration that the deed of variation concluded between the parties was anchored on fraudulent misrepresentation and was therefore void. He claimed compensation of 900,000 US dollars and general damages. On 19th March 2021, the trial judge Duncan Gaswaga decided in favor of Chabahua, holding that the Chinese firm breached the party's consultancy agreement when it refused to pay the businessman the balance of the consultancy fees and the deed of variation was illegal. The judge awarded Chabahua 900,000 US dollars as the outstanding balance on the contract and general damages of 450,000 US dollars for breach of contract and inconvenience. The Chinese firm was dissatisfied with this decision of the High Court and filed an appeal which is yet to be determined by the Court of Appeal. On 30th June 2022, the Chinese firm filed an application for stay of execution of the orders of the High Court pending the hearing and determination of its appeal, fearing that Chabahua would attach its bank account that receives project funds, thereby stalling the government project of completing the road, a major artery that snakes across the terraced hills of southwestern Uganda. The application was supported by an affidavit of the Chinese firm's country manager who revealed that by the time of filing the application for stay of execution, Chabahua had already obtained 950,000 US dollars through Ganeshi proceedings and sought to get another 400,000 US dollars. Ganeshi proceedings is a process of enforcing a money judgment 
by the attachment of the debts due or accruing to the judgment debtor, which forms part of its available property. But the consultant says this application had earlier on been dismissed by the ruling of the High Court judge, Justice Duncan Gaswaga, on 9th April 2021, at the Court of Appeal, constituted by a quorum of justices, Chebrioni Barishaki, Stephen Musota, and Christopher Madrama on 10th June 2021 and at the Supreme Court on 22nd June 2021 by Justice Stella Racha Marco, rulings which the Nation Media Group has seen. Through his lawyers, the consultant accuses the principal judge of interfering with the execution orders of the High Court. Nation Media Group has seen a letter dated August 17, 2022 from Chiabahua, copied to the Chief Justice and Principal Judge, which reads, I quote, Although I have complained to the Principal Judge and the Chief Justice about the former's conduct and also physically met with the Chief Justice to lay bare my complaints and reservations about unfair treatment by the Principal Judge, no attempts have been taken to demonstrate to me that I shall ever get justice from the principal judge." Close quotes. The consultant argues that while the execution proceedings were allocated to Justice Mubiru, who refused to recuse himself from the matter in his ruling dated 12th July 2022, the principal judge nonetheless called for the file, had the application and determined the case in favor of the Chinese firm. Justice Mubiru has rejected allegations of bias made against him by lawyers of the Chinese contractor. The Uganda Code of Judicial Conduct provides that a judicial officer should refrain from participating in any proceedings in which he or she's impartiality may reasonably be questioned. Jolted by these accusations, Justice Mubiru makes an impassioned defense against accusations of bias after he was assigned the execution proceedings through an electronic system. The establishment of the electronic system is one of the major guardrails and reforms that have taken place in the administration of justice by the judiciary of Uganda to espouse transparency in the dispensation of justice. The judiciary rolled out the Electronic Court Case Management Information System, ICMIS, in selected courts, majorly in Kampala and surrounding areas in 2022. It is a digital system that automates and tracks aspects of a court case life cycle, which has dealt away with a paper roster case administration system. Justice Mubiru, on the contrary, accuses the Chinese farm lawyers of forum shopping as a result of off-the-record subterranean currents that are apparently driving the allocation decisions relating to this file, which goes against established processes. Mobiru writes on the extempore ruling dated 9th June 2022, and I quote, Whatever the specific reason, the goal of forum shopping is always the same, to gain a perceived or actual advantage in litigation by benefiting from differences in judicial tendencies of the judges with potential jurisdiction over the litigation. Parties should not seek to manipulate the allocation of a case to a judge before whom they perceive their client may gain some advantage or begin with the odds in their favor. Close quotes. Justice Mubiru writes further, and I quote, there is no basis upon which a reasonable, disinterested, fair-minded and well-informed observer, having considered the facts, would conclude there is a real possibility that I was biased in those proceedings or that I may be biased in the current proceedings before me. That suspicion is an entirely unfounded and speculative proposition. Close quotes. On January 19, 2023 and January 23, 2023, we contacted the Chief Justice and Principal Judge respectively to hear their views on this dispute. The request for comment was officially received by the two respective offices. However, 
by the time of publishing this story, they were yet to comment. The judiciary spokesperson, James Karimani, told this publication that the chief justice and the principal judge, amongst others, have supervisory powers over judicial officers and the administration of justice, which are laid out in the constitution and other enabling laws. Of the, of the, of the, the powers that are given to those administrators, one in the constitution, and in the other enabling laws, because they provide that these people are there to help the chief justice in the management of the courts. So, using those powers, they can now in the, they can now see how to manage any situation that arises. Retired principal judge Justice James Ogola says he may not be well versed with the current situation about allocation of files at the judiciary. Your specific question about allocation of, uh, of files at the judiciary, now I have not the, the information. I will not know what is happening there. I would not really comment usefully on something like that. However, Justice Ogola says during his tenure, there was a desire to embrace digital technology. But I remember one big incident, and that was we had a judge who gave a date for the parties to come back. He said, come back, file your documents by March 10. And the lawyers did their best to do that. And one of them did not quite do it. And apparently they came back, went through the back door, uh, engaged the clerks, and a document that came in on the 11th or 12th somehow now appeared in court as having the date of 10th, the right date. And the other side, of course, complained. And that led from one thing to another, meaning that the human intervention in the processes of the court can be compromised. And so we found a way, even as early as that, to uh, digitalize these things. So that whenever documents came in, you stamped it or whatever it was, the digital bit that was, was then done, and that was forever. You can never change that one. There is no evidence that improper conduct has been proven in this particular case. Peter Mulira, a lawyer, backs the electronic system and implores judges to have the audacity to reject orders. Uh, I will support myself the idea of uh, electronic allocation of court cases because you know there was a complaint that all the cases with big money used to go to particular judges so the complaint was coming from judges themselves and why did they want to handle big cases big money cases because you don't get paid by the clients litigants so I support the idea, and uh, we have to know that uh, technology is the way to go. Chief Justice told me that, um, Mr. Mulira, that file was allocated to you electronically, but give it to Mr. Msoke. I can refuse, and what can he do? However, the exponents of this intervention argue that the electronic system has its flaws which can be cured by the supervision of the Chief Justice and Principal Judge through the allocation of files, amongst other roles. And uh, has supervisory powers over now all the staff, the judicial officers in the, in, in the, in the, in the country. So when he has issues that he has uh, that have been drawn to his attention he may not he, he does not have him at least has no jurisdiction to take over the fire and handle it but uh, all these other administrators the principal judge the deputy chief justice the chief registrar the chief magistrates all those are there to help him in the administration of the courts so if he has an issue in the high court he will now ask the principal judge to take over the issue and manage it. Now it will depend on how the, 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 the principal judge perceives it. He can either take over the file and handle it himself or 
he can allocate it to another judge. So it all depends on the situation that is at hand. For instance, the principal judge in 2020 blocked the payment of 120 billion shillings to Hamis Kigundu pending an appeal by Diamond Trust Bank Limited after Justice Henry Peter Adonio of the Commercial Court had ruled that the businessman should receive a refund for the sum from the bank. In May 2021, the Court of Appeal rescinded the judgment. Three justices, led by Justice Richard Butera, the Deputy Chief Justice declared that Justice Henry Peter Donyo erred when he dismissed the 120 billion shillings commercial case in favor of Kigundu against Diamond Trust Bank Limited. Under these supervisory powers, on 1st December 2021, Justice Owini Dolo instructed Justice Mubiru to hand the file regarding the Chiabawa Chinese farm case to the principal judge. And I quote, this is to bring to your attention the fact that the Honorable Principal Judge is retaining the file and all applications arising therefrom on my express directive to him to do so. He will continue to have possession of the file and take charge thereof until all matters pertaining to and or related thereto at the high court level is duly concluded, close quotes. This prompted the principal judge to write to Justice Stephen Mubiru in a letter dated 11th July 2022 instructing him to forward the file to him for further management in compliance with the Chief Justice's directive. Mubiru later reluctantly handed the file to the principal judge and wrote, I quote, Despite the oddity of the directives, which in my humble opinion not only contradict the established processes of allocation, reallocation and transfer of cases in this court since we migrated to ICMIS, but also the procedures outlined by the Constitution, Recuse of Judicial Officers, Practice Directions 2019, I'm constrained to heed the administrative instructions and hereby submit the file to the office of the principal judge for further management. The parties shall be advised by that office as regards the next steps. It is so ordered. Close quotes. In his application on the matter delivered on 31st October 2022, the principal judge, Flavian Zeja, dismissed the preliminary objection that the matter of stay of execution had already been adjudicated till the highest appellate court in favor of Jabahua. The principal judge decided the application in favor of the Chinese firm and ordered stay of execution of the orders of the high court until the final determination of the Chinese farm appeal at the Court of Appeal. In his ruling, the principal judge accused Chabahua of dishonestly recovering more money than he was owed. The principal judge reasoned that in situations where money is advanced to the contractor in stages, one risks attaching funds earmarked for a particular stage of the project against the legal doctrine of common good. Jabawa, on the contrary, says the application for stay, which was heard and determined by the principal judge, was res judicata, so far as it had already been heard and dismissed by the High Court, the Court of Appeal, and the Supreme Court. The principle of res judicata provided in Section 7 of the Civil Procedure Act bars parties to a suit from litigating the same dispute again once a final judgment has been rendered by a competent court clothed with jurisdiction. The record also contains a letter authored earlier on dated 16th June 2021 from the principal judge addressed to Justice Mubiru faulting him for issuing an order dated 15th June 2021 granting a certificate of urgency for hearing of Chabahua's application for execution contrary to the Chief Justice's directives contained in a circular issued on 7th June 2021, which had earlier on suspended all execution proceedings for a period of 42 days. Justice Zaija writes, and I quote, The Honorable the Chief Justice has brought to my attention the above-mentioned order and the impending execution proceedings and processes in the subject case which are contrary to circular CJ. 
Therefore, the purpose of this letter is to bring to your attention paragraph 6 of the said enclosed circular, which expressly suspended all execution proceedings and processes for a period of 42 days. I close quotes. Justice Mubiru responded to this concern in his letter to the principal judge dated 17th June 2021. The judge argued that his decision was based on his interpretation of the administrative circular of the Chief Justice related to the revised contingency measures for the prevention and mitigation of the COVID-19. And I quote, Whereas Clause 5 suspends all court hearings and appearances and Clause 6 suspends all execution proceedings and processes, Clause 7 makes an exception for only urgent matters. It is my humble view that urgent matters are not limited to hearings and appearances, but also include execution proceedings and processes. Justice Mubiru opined. <laughs>